I want to introduce uh, Dory Blessoff, the Chief People Officer of KCURA, who, by the way, has some, uh, they recently introduced and announced some pretty cool stuff about 108 people that are going to be hired as a result of the Cubs winning after 108 years. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Scott. And yes, sir, we're pretty excited about that. And We've got already the Cubs been. Blue. I wore Cubs blue today. I got some Cubs stories to tell. This I want to hear. Let's start with the Cubs <laughs> stories, then we can get to the business. Well, here's the thing. To be honest, I, I'm not like a diehard fan like a lot of people at work are, and a lot of people in Chicago, obviously, and outside of Chicago, and the five million that showed up. To be honest, I was a Sox fan my entire life, but I'm just very happy. Whoa. With the Cubs. Okay. Well, that's how we all feel, right? Yeah, We're so great. happy. And the thing that happened to me was I just got hooked. I totally got hooked. And uh, what happened after Game 7, which was just like epic, uh, is so many people just started reflecting on, wow, that was just amazing. And I started thinking, as I often do, uh, and our, all of our leaders at KCURA and a lot of our team members are always like talking about, what does this have to do with KCURA, right? So I just came up with some thoughts that I shared in a recent blog post at, at KCURA about what can we learn from the Cubs? Like, what is it about what the Cubs just accomplished that all of us can learn from in, in business. So that's why I had to share. You want to hear it? Yes. Well, I was just going to say, we definitely want to hear this because I the same reason, I suspect, that I really got behind the Cubs in this. It's cool for the city, of course. I like to see any championships here. It's an excuse to drink in the street. I'm good with that. Um, but what is particularly unique about this team is I don't know how you don't root for them because the culture was so insane. They had they have a party room. They've got like the perfect, like we had a bad day, go in this room, lock the door, get your frustration out, but then it's over, we move on. There were so many parts about it as a business person that was like, I can relate to that, do and that and I'm behind yeah. it. Yeah. So I am excited to yeah. hear what you well, guys are doing. Yeah, and now you're getting me excited about telling the Kikira story, but just to pause for a moment for the Cubs. So one thing is just believing that it's possible, right? So when you're a startup, you just have to believe and you have to keep at it and keep at it. And they they never gave up, even after 108 years, right? Yeah. So never giving up is the first thing. Like, believe and never give up, even when it's hard, even when you're not sure what's going to happen in the eighth and ninth inning. Secondly or is, or yeah. on, onward, right? Or the other thing that we, we can see that they did, and all great teams do, is you put the right people in the right roles with the right focus, and then everybody commits to flawless execution. Meticulous execution is what we call it at Kikira. So being able to be flexible and moving people around based on their strengths, based on the interests that have emerged, based on what's needed for innovation, all those things is like be flexible, but put the right people there with the right focus and then let them do their thing. The other thing about it, which was really cool, if you look back on what happened, is there were some heroic plays, it's true, and there was also lost opportunities, runners left on base. There was also bad calls, close calls, all that stuff. But in the end, they won as a team. And no game is ever just one action, right? So when we talk about failing fast, we talk about throwing people in there and just letting them do their thing. We do that as a team and we win as a team. And it was really the whole team that was our hero. I mean, my three and a half year old granddaughter knows everybody's names. Like she, she knows their numbers and their names. The whole team was a hero. And the other thing is, in the end, they played their game. And I don't think any of us will ever forget the rain delay. Like, no. And we, one of our Kikurians, Kelly, was, it was Kikurians. his face. Yeah, Kate Curians. It was Kelly's face that was flashed over Facebook with during the rain delay with that expression like, oh, no. See, I was the exact opposite. When that came in, I was like, this is the anti-goat. Because every year we get the bad thing, and we had the bad thing already. The the ninth inning, or the, was it the eighth inning when they tied the game? Yeah. That, we had our bad thing. So when yeah. I saw the rain delay, I was like, this is going to be the opportunity to regroup. What I thought was unique, and going back to your list, is speaking of the entire team, Jason Hayward. Being the one That's that gets what behind I'm him was about. like, you know what, yes. we did, I'm not doing yes. my best, but I can still give to this team yes. myself something to contribute. And he did. And he just pulling did. them together. And I loved when he said that about, I just wanted them to remember who they were, were yeah. who they are as a team. And I think that at Kekura, that is totally the same as like us remembering our core values. Because when you grow and you go through changes and there's lots of challenges and stuff, you've got to remember who you are. And that's what differentiates you. That's what gives you your grounding. That's what gives you your motivation to go back out there and play your game. I you think it's funny, did. you know, without, I mean, I guess it's chicken or the egg here, without the being able to play as, you know, play your game, so to speak, uh, I don't think you have that ability if you don't have players like the Hayward, the moments like where they step out and, and, and fulfill their role properly and vice versa. You don't, you know, if you don't have players like that or, uh, people like that, you're not going to be able to play that kind of game anyway. Um, we're going to be talking about and talking to the Bunker Labs for an, another episode, and we've got this veteran showcase we're talking about. And that's one of the things that I think makes it really unique, particularly for veteran 
entrepreneurs is that you are taught sort of an ethos and we operate yes. in a certain way. Yes. And if you buy into it, if, if yes. we, it's our job as leadership to, to put the team together that can play in that ethos. But if you follow it, we'll get there. Yes. You know, it may not work yes. every time, but it'll work at the end. Yes. I mean, I honestly, I feel that, and many of us feel that every time our, our founder and CEO, Andrew Seja, gets on the stage to, at an all hands, at an all company, all hands, and people are calling in because we now have offices around the world and it's very exciting. It's that moment of like, okay, we're remembering who we are. Here's how we've done. Here's where we fell short. Here's where we're challenged. Here we had some unexpected successes. But that ethos of like, we're in it together. We're, we're focused. We're having, we really appreciate each other. I mean, I guess the only thing about like, you have to have people like Hayward who call people together. At Kira, one of the interesting things that happens, and I see this because I'm in charge of the engagement surveys and we have to look at all the results. If you were to ask the people that work at Kira, the people that work at Kira, what is their top thing? They will say the people. They will say the people because we all have that. And that's because we recruit for our core values and we make sure that people are already demonstrating them by the time they come in and join our team. So it's really common to have good people yeah. engaged in all of our stuff. And that's part of our ethos. It's well, really let's cool. get into that, I guess. I mean, one, a little bit of a background on what Kira does and who they are. Uh, and then I think what might be interesting and particularly valuable to the listeners is those who are small small business and startup companies who are probably about to throw the the gasoline on the fire kind of moment of hiring people, how do you make sure to hire based on the values that you've set forth versus, um, you know, what's expected of me, so to speak? You know, we, we, we need an ops person. We need a CFO. How do you make sure that you're focused on on hiring within your ethos? Yeah, cool. Well, as far as Kikura, Kikura is a legal technology company. We're based in Chicago, although we now have global offices opening up. We have about 600 folks, and we started in 2001. I'd love to tell the startup story, too, but at this point, what we're doing is we're providing our customers, who are law firms, government agencies, corporations, with a really fantastic product called Relativity, and Relativity does what everybody needs now with big data it helps search and analyze and produce relevant documents for any legal process like lawsuits or investigations or government inquiries certainly in the news recently at the fbi has talked about being challenged with going through the number of yeah. emails and that's the kind of thing relativity does very well and it does it's got capa great capabilities of like 80 billion files are under our management right now. Our biggest case so far is 750 million documents. And if you just think for a minute about some old movie where the lead attorney assigns the law associates boxes and boxes of paper files to take in their car. Yeah. And, and, and go the amount of hours that we going to pay as a yeah, result of that. Five nights and cold pizza to get through it. Oh my now think about the modern day and how much of the data is on devices or multimedia yeah. and servers and every electronic avenue is producing data so what relativity does is help search through that efficiently and effectively and more affordably uh, to help without getting too far into the weeds of it like how, how does that work i mean from a tech side of it a little bit you don't have to go you know into in any of the tech it's really just a matter of i think some people hear that and they're like well does it just scan and analyze and tag keywords like how, how does something like how do i if i'm a i guess i'm looking at this from the standpoint of a lawyer if i'm a lawyer at a firm and i want to take advantage of something like this, how, how would, you know, what, what, am I, what am I looking for? Sure. I mean, I can talk about that a little bit from the point of view of the, what, what our product has grown, because Kikira's sure. growth story is like our product has grown, yeah, why don't our you customer do that? base has grown. a better idea of what, what you're working on. Well, I mean, in terms of the product, so we have a, a really strong unified platform that's, fluid, that's, that's flexible and connected now, so that means people can work on top of the platform to do some solutions as well. But prior to that, what we did was grow our product base to follow all of the process steps that are involved in e-discovery. So in other words, we have to get relevant data in the system and get data in the system. Then we have to filter out what's relevant by date, by person, by topic, et cetera. And then we have to analyze it and figure out what's really there. We have to deduplicate it and all of that stuff and process it and get it to the point where it's honed and clear enough so that the person who's going to use it in the trial has exactly what they need and has and knows exactly what has to be given to the opposing side. I got to tell you, I'm glad I didn't end up going to law school. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about this right now. I'm like, it's, it's, it, you know, it's challenging enough to explain 
just the the monotony of what this software has to do because it's a it's a necessary thing. Imagine actually being the lawyer who's like, thank goodness I don't have to do that anymore. Well, and that's why we want more and more people to use relativity because it really Absolutely. does, this does is help cool. them a lot. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Kira and 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 kind of the growth story, and we really love telling our story and we really appreciate being based in the Chicago community because of the focus now on incubating startups and it's really cool to be at a point now where we're we were started in 2001 as a software consulting organization by Andrew, and now we're like 600 people ish and growing. Uh, we have like 50 open recs, and we're opening up more all the time. We've pledged to hire 108 people this year alone. We we're bringing in 200 people, so we're we're still in rapid growth phase, yeah. and that hasn't slowed down at all. So, in terms of you, your question about bringing people in. Um, yeah, the core values has really been instrumental for us. The, the question gets asked of us and me in the human resources field a lot. So how do you maintain your culture as you grow rapidly? And that's really something that a lot of leaders kind of sweat up, sweat about, right? Because yeah. you don't want to wake up in two years and feel like it's not your company that you wanted to have. And Andrew has been very clear from the beginning. He wanted to build something to last. He really wanted to invest in the people. And I would say that's the first thing is don't wait too long. Think about the people that you want and think about how to attract them and then keep them. So our core values piece, and you mentioned how do you weigh that against like the expertise that's needed. Yep. We weigh it equally. We weigh it in our interview process. We ask people questions about how they demonstrate. Our core values are things everybody can understand, like be an excellent communicator, hold yourself and your colleagues accountable, enjoy and be great at your job, which is where we get the fun factor, embrace the talents of your colleagues and our clients, so the collaboration. So we spell this out, do more with less, be humble and stay hungry, exceed expectations. We spell it out, and it actually has actionable items associated with it. So not only do we recruit for it, but then we give each other feedback about it. So we have like a monthly performance coaching where you get checked in with your manager, the team member. How is the manager doing? How is the team member doing? What else can they do to grow and develop? I think that's key. I mean, that last part is, I was going to say something else before that, but that last part is actually key, uh, I think, when it comes to this rapid growth. When you start to go from, especially with with the way that Andrew originally designed this company, it was probably not a 600-person, no way, you know, massive growing company. That was not the the concept. So the idea for him to say, this is what we think is mean success for us, and then being able to maintain not just the, like, this is our values and mission on the wall, but actually maintain that in daily practice. Yeah. I think it's key that the, the the people who, the leadership is meeting with the middle, which is meeting with the new, you know, new onboarded people, and they maintain that sort of ebb and flow that is the way that the company is growing rather than taking off like a race and there's just a huge gap. Well, and I think there's a couple of things. First of all, he always had in his vision to build something to last. So that was always there. I just don't like he he describes himself as a geek turned business person yeah. because he was like he loves where he loves coding. He loves the tech. Yep. And he didn't didn't imagine it being what it is today. Yeah. But it was always his vision. Like if I'm going to do this, I want to make it meaningful. In fact, when he recruited me to be the chief people officer, which we made up the name after we talked, he said, I, I have three things I need your help with. I want to continue to develop a product and, and produce something that our customers love and rely on and, and, and want more of. I want to be a place where people can work and love coming to work. And I want to give back to our communities because we need to level the playing field with the next generation so they have the resources they need in technology to be able to compete. And he, he had me. He had yeah. me at hello. Like I totally believe in that quote, value proposition. And I think being clear on your vision and being able to put it to people so that they get it, that's going to attract you the right people and they and they stay motivated while they're there. Well, I, I know what the guys that are sitting in the room here producing the show, I, I struggle with trying to put the vision on, you know, I'm always working to put the vision on paper to refine it so that everyone can actually see visually what we're trying to do and what I'm trying to, to, to build with this. Where I think I fall short um, I know I fall short and, and I would like to improve on it. And I know that there's lots and lots of companies that are at our stage below us and above us that also struggle with this. And you guys are doing a great job, uh, as I can see on the papers that you have in front of you that actually have the bullet points, is writing it down. Okay. In my mind, I know what yeah. my values are yeah. and what I think the organizational value should be. Yeah. But I, I don't write it. You know, I just never wrote it down. I never put yeah. it like put it in words. I think, you know, right now there's like four or five of us, right? Yeah. So it's I can tell each one of these guys, like, this is what we're trying to do. And, you know, whether or not they want to buy it or not is a different choice, but I can, you know, I can at least say it. Once you get to like six, seven, 10, 20, 50 people, 
you have to have sort of a bulletin that says, yeah. this is who we are, yeah. and check yourself. Yeah. This is who we are. Yeah. So I can share that Andrew did a really cool thing. Um, in 2009, he pulled the 75-ish people together in the, in the cafeteria and said, we need to decide who we're going to be. Let's talk about who, what, what, what experiences we've had that we don't want to be, and then let's talk about who we do want to be. And so I would say to you, it's not just something that exists in the head of the leader. It has to be participatory. It has to be something shared. Then people feel like, yeah, my name, my idea is in yep. that. So I think that's a key thing is like getting everybody involved. And then when you codify it, it's for real and it represents people. The other thing I'll tell you is, shoot, we just redid our vision. Like it has to iterate as you grow. Yeah. It's like breathing and growing any organism, right? It's like you have to change and innovate and grow. So we just rearticulated our vision and we came up with our mission, which is organize data, discover the truth and act on it. And everybody's talking about it. So you don't have to just come up with it once forever. You have to evolve, you know, as you grow. And and you have to let your communities help you. Like we, we are in any ecosystem. We're interdependent with our customers. We're interdependent what's going on in the market. We're even interdependent in, in the human resource field with like who wants to come to our place and what are they looking for? Yeah. And we have to be ready to change. So there's some things that stay the same. Like for us, our core values have not changed. But what's changed is the norms and the behaviors that we associate with those core values. And that's what we keep iterating and keep talking about and keep participating. You know, it's funny, and like kind of on the final note of this, I, the, the part where I particularly, I like that. I, I definitely want to steal a lot from that. And, and what I look at is, I have my sort of values, which I hope that I kind of plug into this company. And I, I know we, when we bring these guys in that I'm hoping that they don't look at me. I don't want to look at them as like my resources. It should be the other way around. I've got yes. five, you know, very talented people, four talented people who can utilize the resources that I provide them with and they can use me however they see fit and vice versa. Yeah. I don't like the companies that I see where it's like, I'm the leader, I'm the one who does this. Yeah. And then you got, you do this, you do that, you do that. I don't, I don't think that's a healthy way to grow yeah and it's not what people are looking for now people want to come and learn and have transparency and have their say and give and contribute and there's a real giving back ethic and i think the leadership profile that you're describing yeah. doesn't have that service mentality is like Certainly how can not. we how can we help each other and yeah. scott i have to tell you there's one thing i'm so excited about and, and it has to do with giving back and it has to do with a lot of people looking for that when they're joining something. So startups are really cool because they're fun and you have all this exposure to doing different happen. things. And it's very, yeah, it's like live your own adventure, right? Choose your is. own adventure. When you get to our, our stage and, and part of Andrew's vision was always giving back. And we have a really phenomenal partnership with CPS right now, especially the CIO's office. And we're, uh, we're giving technology grants to local schools and it's having a huge difference. And that is something exciting to the people. So you, you want to bring in good people, and then you want to give them an opportunity to contribute, both in their work every day, but also back to the community. It's, it's, we'd love more companies to join us. We, it's called Wired to Learn. We should absolutely talk offline about this because we, you know, obviously I wish I had talked to you before we did our education uh, technology showcase in September. But we, I actually have a call this week with one of the people at CPS about basically giving a pipeline so that they can go to all these technology events and meet these companies and entrepreneurs just at the very minimum is to find mentorship and, and someone who, particularly the, the females, who are looking for somebody who looks like them, who's doing you know, yeah. coding and things like yeah, that. Yeah, very important. And getting the technology in the school so they can use it and get yep. competent in it because they're eager and motivated and bright. They just don't have the resources. Absolutely. So that's very pretty cool. cool, too. Very cool. Uh, well, thank you very much for coming in. Where do people, lawyers, everyone uh, go to find out more about Kcura, uh, employees who are looking to work at your awesome company? Anything can be gotten from our website, so kcura.com. We have everything there from what I was just talking about to our open recs, to our history, to our user communities. We have portals. We have everything there. And I want to let you know, you have a very active social media. We did a story on Kcura when you guys announced 108, yeah. uh, 108 hiring. You guys shared it within like 15 minutes or something. Yeah. So very yeah. active social We're on media. It. <laughs> Dory, thank you so much All right. for taking Thanks, the time. Thanks, Scott. Really Absolutely. appreciate the opportunity. Of course. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.